every people, Eliora here, and I'm going to do something y'all have been wanting me to do for a while. I'm about to do a review, but I ain't doing this one by myself. I got a friend, or more than friend. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I got an acharky with me. Because she's the only one that knows how to say my name properly. <laughs> Oh, jeez. So, about a week ago, about a week ago? Yeah, a little, a little more than a week ago, yeah. Well, close enough. We got us a new Pokemon game. Pokemon Sun and Moon, only hyped for like a year. That's about all. Stay tuned for Pokemon Twilight version. <laughs> God damn it. I guess I can't make that joke since they've not done like third... <laughs> Third, third Z's on games in a while. Yeah, that is weird, but anyway. Um, we figured that I haven't done a review in a while, and a turkey likes to talk about the games, so we're going to do a review of Pokemon Sun and Moon. We are unscripted, which was one of the big reasons we're doing it in the format that we are, because uh, to give a little perspective... So, each of us, the previous night uh, before recording this, we each completed, like, the main story in Sun and Moon. And if you're worried about spoilers or you want spoilers, guess what? We got something for everybody! So, the first part of this review is going to be spoiler-free. And if you're still wondering what did we think of some of the stuff that normally we can't talk about without spoiling something... We're going to put a timestamp, and we're also going to clearly make it and point out when we start talking about spoiler stuff uh, within this video recording, what have you. Uh, so, first part of the review, no spoilers. And if I start to drift over there, stop me, because sometimes I will go places I don't mean to when I talk. Yeah, um, and we'll try, we'll try our best to like dance around stuff for this first part without getting into like too much detail of who happens into what and whatnot but spoiler there's no dancing in the game <laughs> okay that's a, that's a spoil i don't think anybody minds but, <laughs> um, so to start off i want to mention a little bit about how nuts it was for the midnight release we went to <laughs> okay i've never been to, i had never been to a midnight release before sun and moon so, Acharki insisted we go there, and I was like, sure, I'm all for this. I've never done this before. <laughs> it was unique. Oh, was it ever. And granted, midnight releases I've gone to, like, granted, I grew up in a small town originally, which is far from the case where both of us currently live, which is also one of the reasons why it's easy to do this. We live under the same roof. Yay. <laughs> and <laughs> we, uh... Uh, we live in a fairly much bigger area than what I'm used to. And previous Midnight releases I've gone to, like, like Halo Reach and a couple of Gears of War games, probably like 2 and 3. Um, you know, decent-sized crowds considering the area I lived in. But this was... This was enormous. This... They were like they had to divvy us up into like groups and group numbers. Yeah. And then divvy the groups into like smaller like i don't know units it was like instead of one big humongous line it was they had numbered groups and it's like okay group one's line go and then they went in and the gamestop we were at they were smart enough to like okay make sure everybody is paid for in advance and, and had then, their receipts and all that sort of yeah thing. and then at midnight they open the door and they let people know okay this group first in a single line and and everything but and everything was cool there was no like pandemonium or anything stupid like that everybody everybody was and it the, the, was interesting to see some of the sort of cosplayers that were there oh man i mean if you wanted to see there were if you wanted to see a guy in his 20s in a pikachu hoodie we saw it if you wanted to see somebody with a Sylveon hat, winter hat on, we saw it. If you wanted to see a group of people, you know, maybe a little bit younger than us, some of them probably our age, yeah. sitting in a corner of a GameStop playing a Pokemon card game while a DJ plays the Poke Rap, we saw it. 
<laughs> it was great. It, it was, really was. It really was just this big nerdgasm of Poke fans and nobody having to feel ashamed about anything and like seeing people like, oh, dude, you want to battle? You want to tag battle? Like, just you want to go, bro? Want to fight? Well, it wasn't really like that, but like people were hyped in like a good way. It's like, oh, we do team battle. It's like, oh, dude, two on two, like stuff like that. Let's go. And let's fucking let's fucking dick. Let's fucking do this. I remember in the I said fucking t- three times for no reason. Oh well, this <laughs> yeah, think... and this isn't my recordings are never PG. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use some adult language here, so. Whoopsies, sorry kids, but um, there was the well, the Christmas lights thing were kind of unrelated considering yeah. the time of year, so I'm not. So even gonna, let's not bother. Yeah, I'm not gonna mention that. But what I what I will mention is that um, <laughs> the the plushies were popular. Plushies were going out the door. I I will get you one. Um, <laughs> I want my Poplio plushie. Team Poplio, bitch. I know. And we went back there like a week later. They still don't have any more, so yeah. I have to track those down. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. Everybody was very nice. I remember having Alpha Sapphire on my 3DS and the street passes. Oh, oh wow. The st- I have never had so many street passes on my 3DS. Of course, my- you didn't know what street passes were until I told you after I moved in. And I had only owned a 3DS like a year before this, so I... <laughs> but... Um, I played, like, Alpha Sapphire and was running, like, secret bases and getting flags. It was great. Um, <laughs> I got, like, t- 25 or 30 street passes inside of an hour. You were playing, great. like, the, you were playing, like, the Mii Plaza stuff. Yeah, because I don't really bother with, like, the flag collecting on, on Omega Ruby because, it's, like, I have all the, all the Mega Stones <coughs> between my, um, X, Y, and Elf, and Omega Ruby games, so I don't mm-hmm. need to bother. But no, it was a great experience. I I'm glad we did it. It was awesome. Um, so I guess with that being said, we'll get to the game and some of our expectations of which. I was worried when I first heard about the way they were doing like no gyms, but these trials and challenges. I was like. This they are taking a chance with this. Yeah, and it's one of the, it's one of those things where this is one of those cases where you see that line where Nintendo of all companies they have their formulas that they stick to with their current franchises. It's a me. <laughs> yeah, and I, as it, it's like there are two sides of a coin on that which you can't please everybody. There are people that want something new and people that don't want them to change. Mm-hmm. And depending on how vocal either side is because you know pokemon it's been the same for years and you and i can both attest to that yeah i mean i've been a fan of the franchise since it first crossed the ocean the main thing being you pick your fire water leaf starter you beat eight gyms beat the elite four come the champion done yeah collect some legendaries along the way afterwards and all that sort of good stuff have your end game content and this one shook things up like it didn't, you know, tear down the fucking bridges or anything, but it, like, it it breathed a breath of fresh air into the franchise that I think it needed. Mm-hmm. Like, in the last time, one of the last um, recordings that I did, one of the last videos I did, I mentioned that, um, <coughs> I me- had mentioned that there should be some more options to the whole Pokemon franchise thing. And while you still don't deviate from being a trainer, they did that in a way I didn't expect. As well as like, just kind of just kind of throwing you for a loop of like, okay, I'm gonna pick this one, and then my rival's gonna pick something, and and they even changed that up. And like the fucking rival picks the one that's weak to you. It, it was weird. Um, but uh, uh, and like I said, we're not gonna get too much into spoilery stuff, but we will mention. I mean, we'll mention some stuff that we'll happens, talk about like, it later. We'll mention some stuff that happens, like, right at the beginning, because it's, like... Yeah, that's not spoilery. Stuff within the first five minutes that, like, a lot of people already know about, um, you know, like, our starters. What what were your opinions on the starters, honey? Well, I still don't care about Rowlet, but... <laughs> that's not true. Rowlet's adorable. Initially, and I'm sure absolutely no one will be surprised by this, I was gonna go with Litten. 
And because little fire kitten, and it's so cute. And we had we had discussions about this. Like we were just we were deciding what versions are we gonna get? Because I like I asked you first. I knew I wanted Moon off the bat. No pun intended. And I was perfectly fine with that because the one on the copy of Sun is a fucking Zoid. It's not a Zoid. It's it's it's. Tell me, there are comparison shots out there that there's some striking. <laughs> I'm not saying it looks exactly like a Zoid, but it's some. Oh, I'm blowing out the audio. My bad. There are some striking resemblances to Liger Zero. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <coughs> and I think he's dope. Not to mention with all the Steven Universe I've been watching, it's like Mythical Lion beats Mythical Bat, but ah. the Mythical Bat's not bad. Bats are super cute and adorable, and I like me some lunar motifs. Unless it's Golbat and Zubat. I, I can't stand those things. I didn't like them in Gen 1. I don't like them now. I, I like them. They're the bane of every Pokemon game where there's a cave. Even this one. If Did you a say cave, gave? Cave. I thought you said gave. You mean like Gave pronounced wrong? No, I mean like Gavin Free. Oh, no. I mean cave. And every fucking Pokemon game where there's a cave, there's a Zubat in there. And I hate it. Or a Golbat. And I'm I admit tired. the abundance of them is annoying. People have that same problem with Tentacle when you surf. I mean, I mean, with a Woobat, at least that's some variety. It's like, okay, and it's something different to look at than fucking Zubats. Like, but it's worth raising them. I guess. When I... they become a Crobat, that is the fastest Pokemon you're ever going to see. And I, I mean, and I still have one. I just haven't raised it yet. But that's aside the point. So I ended up going with Litten. And what was funny about our conversation about what starter we were going to go with. He was going to go with Poplio initially. I was going to go with Litten. And my biggest and what was dumb was like, one, I, th I think Poplio looks great. Because mm, it's, it's super cute. He's a seal with clown nose and, he's go and he goes bork bork. And <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you. Shout out to you, Isaac. <laughs> and, um. And also just kind of my, like, OCD of, like, okay, I went with the fire type in uh, Alpha Sapphire, and I went with the plant type in Y, so I'm going to go with the water type this time around. That didn't end up happening, though, because as... We wound up finding out what their evolved forms were. Which I'm glad about, because that was another conversation we had to have. <laughs> because I like wrestling. I don't. And... And you also have a big affinity for fairies. And I like and I like all things elegant and beautiful. And Poplio evolves into one of the biggest, like. Okay, if you don't, if you use the term femboy for your male, for, for, I wasn't for your going male, to say, po I was uh, grown to, Poplio, it's not in, inaccurate. I wasn't going to say that. Well, I, that's why I'm here. I'm trying. I was trying to think of the like. Pretty boy, I guess you could say. Pretty boy, nothing. That's a fucking RuPaul. It is. It is incredibly feminine looking, but that doesn't detract from the fact that Poplio is still great. And oh yeah, and Brione, the if we're pronouncing that right, which is the uh, the middle yeah. evolution. I hope we're. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Someone will correct us. Yeah. Hashtag corrections. <laughs> Comment section. That's what comment sections are for, to prove someone that they're wrong. Um, anyway. And and Rowlett, we'll give Rowlett some love. There's, there's Rowlett evolves cool. There's no escaping Yeah, that. but even Rowlett by himself, he's, he's a little owl with a bow tie. That's great. And then he evolves into fucking teenage emo ego raptor. With, yeah, with a permanent, like, I don't know what you'd call that. I can't call it rat tail because it's not down the middle, but... No, like, it's, it's like the emo strands. Yeah, it's the bangs that he's got, but... I And I keep on saying, and I don't know how many people agree with me, but he looks like fucking Ego Raptor. <laughs> that's, that's a fair comparison, so... <laughs> um, but yeah, and like, choosing the starter and everything, and probably the... Uh, uh, just looking at this game on like a mechanical standpoint though and something i loved was hey did you hate the fact that pokemon moves on a grid not anymore like not since mm. pokemon xd has there been a game that was like this one where movement wise anyway i mean this this felt like 
this felt like Game Freak making a console game. The way it looks and um, the way it, the way you move around and everything, it's it's fantastic. Uh, Can you tell he's serious about his video games? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what were your first impressions of it after you got it into your hands and you played around with it a good amount? Like, not even before you made, like, you know, before you beat it, like, what was your impressions of it? My impressions of it is that that mother is exceptionally lazy. <laughs> oh, come on. No one ever finishes pa unpacking in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, oh, what a glorious day. I swear I'll have everything unpacked by the time you get home. One adventure later. Oh, um, I'm not done yet. Everything is still in freaking boxes. I mean, it's not as bad as, like, letting your kid ride in the back of the moving truck before getting there. Yeah, okay. You're not gonna top that one. But, we didn't have enough room in the car, honey! Get in the truck! <laughs> You're out of Sorry, just... I have to protect the fine china. <laughs> or one of those dumb kids that actually wanted to ride in the back. Or... Mm, that seems so unappealing. <laughs> So, set up behind this one, uh, you are some kid who moved from Kanto region. And you have a normal Meowth. Mm-hmm. Well, at least your character's mother does. And, uh, and you move to the newly introduced region of this game, which is Alola, clearly based on Hawaii. Like, if you think it's anywhere but Hawaii, I'm going to smack you upside the head with a can of Pringles. And granted, considering the fact that, like, every region in previous games has always been loosely inspired by regions and, like, you know, places yeah. in real life. I yeah. I mean, Sinnoh was pretty much based, it was the one that was based around America, and Kanto was Japan, and, uh... Sinnoh was the one based around America? Is that why everyone except America hated it? I mean, the biggest, re the biggest reason I remember that, uh, here's some trivia, kids, is that, um... Trubbish, the little garbage bag mm -hmm. Pokemon. You mean Unova, babe. Is that Unova? Unova is the ge fifth generation region. Sinnoh is the fourth. Oh, shit. I always thought... Always, I get my stuff mixed up sometimes. Okay. This is why you have the Pokemon nerd sitting right next to you. All right, so Unova was based on around, America, uh, around America. I was about to say, because that didn't sound right. Yeah, so we've been corrected. You don't need to correct me, comment section. Um, <clears throat> so Anova was based around America, and the biggest reason uh, to remember that is, okay, unlike the way I did it, but Trubbish, the little garbage bag Pokemon, the creators base, uh, created that one in the game based around America. Why? Because of all the trash in New York they experienced. Thanks. <laughs> I want to say that they're incorrect. I can't. I yeah, lived uh, there. Like, They're completely right. I spent a week there, and I kind of felt like, yeah, I want to leave. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and his week was on Long Island. Just driving through the city was enough for him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, on a freaking Sunday. No offense to our New York listeners, but... um. All the offense to the New York listeners. I don't care. That is my bloodline. That is my roots. I will insult my roots as much as I freaking want. Just pick up after yourselves, folks. Um, <laughs> um, but aside from that, uh, getting getting back to the sun and moon. So, you know, right off the bat, uh, the, the area new air, new Alola region looks great. The, and also, I want to point out that they kicked up the graphics a lot, too. Mm hmm Like, it looks amazing. The the only times when graphics were not that great was when... And this was something that happened in the previous Pokemon games, where the frame rate would slow down if you were doing, like, multiple Pokemon battles. Like, if there's four on screen at once in a battle, the frame rate's dropping. Yeah, and especially if you have your 3D on, you will see that. Ooh, yeah. Um... I couldn't turn 3D on when I was playing Pokemon Moon. That's odd. And I, I will point out, like, you know, we don't know all the stuff performance-wise because we both own new 3DSs, so... 
are your experience may differ if you're not playing on a new 3DS, if you're playing like on an original or a 2DS. We we can't speak to that. So Sally, we go on our own experiences here. <laughs> um I don't know why I felt the need to do a baby voice there. Cuz you're adorable. No, um, shush. <laughs> um so so honey, how did you feel about the challenges, the way those work? Why so why is this game still good despite the fact there's no gyms? No more gyms. First of all, fuck you because you still didn't give me my dark type gym. <laughs> but well, the way that they did the game progression was not through gyms, but through island challenges and they structured that really interest in a really interesting way. Like you go and find these areas and then you have to do some sort of challenge and it's a different thing each time. It's almost like if you watched the anime in the second part of the series where Ash was going through the Orange Islands, <coughs> where sometimes it's where it's when he goes to those gyms, it's not necessarily a battle. Um, by the way, that was the very first time you ever saw double battles implemented in Pokemon ever. You're welcome. And <laughs> no, but um, it was like the, I specifically remember one where they had to like freeze a uh, geyser solid, then carve it into ice sled and ski down there, and it's stuff like that. It it'll be a different sort of challenge. It'll be. Not necessarily a battle, although every single one ends in a battle when you find the freaking totem. Yeah, the totem being the the almost quote-unquote boss of a trial, if you will, of a challenge. Where you basically face a Pokemon on steroids. Yeah. That is native to the area. Um, we found out that that can vary between between versions, though. Like the very first one. I don't think this counts too much as spoilers. That there's version different. Well, as, as far as like the first trial goes, no, I don't yeah. think it does. No, but um, in the first trial, a Charky played Sun. He fought like uh, the Yungus evolution. Yeah, yeah, the Gumshoes is what it is called. Which is stupid, by the way. <laughs> and then I fought Faticate. Which. <laughs> Thank you, Gaijin Goomba, for that. Yeah, name. ever since we saw your vi that video by Gaijin Goomba talking about the um, Raticate, he called it Faticate, and we've been calling it that ever since. Because it's what it is. I mean, it's like, yeah, there's there's really no way around it. Um, but yeah, the trials and they're because the way it works is that you have there are four different islands that you'll hop between, and there are a number of trials on each one. You face each trial, then, after you've cleared the trials, meaning you've done whatever the trial recommends you do, you beat a boss Pokemon, then you go up against the Kahuna of the island. And that's basically the closest thing you have to, like, gym leaders, is that there is an actual person that you, fight, that you battle against, and they have their respective types that they use and going against that. Yeah, which... but the interesting thing is, there's only four of them, as mm -hmm. opposed to eight. And you have to go through trials to get that far. And that will... You can sink hours and hours just into doing that, which is a whole new way to play your game, which was what kept it really fun. And even in some cases, the kahunas will make you do stuff sometimes before you straight up even battle them. Mm -hmm. So... There's some very interesting twists on this, and something that uh, you also reminded me of, and again, this isn't a spoiler, this is something that has kind of been common knowledge, the fact that we get new spins on existing Pokemon, so aside from all the new common, Pokemon... Kind of common knowledge, that was one of the main ways they pushed the game. Oh, true. Yeah. Fucking Doug Trio! You're not gonna let that go, are you? No! Well, so... One of the cool things about the game that we liked, aside from all the new species of Pokemon that are introduced, we get Alolan forms of Pokemon. Fucking Doug Trio. Yeah, but, well, just think of Vulpix. No. That'll calm you down. <laughs> I... <laughs> it's fucking Hanson! If you look at Doug Trio, he's got the little guy with the short hair, and then the middle guy with the medium hair, and then you got fucking Rapunzel hair, a big brother in the back. It's fucking Hanson! I keep expecting them to break out their instruments and start going, mm, Bobby! 
beep, 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 whatever. <laughs> Ow. Sorry. I probably shouldn't have put my foot there. Sorry. It's okay. I'm uh, good. Um, live blooper? Yeah, that's a blooper. We don't have to leave that in. No, we kind of do. Okay, never because mind. Because of the timing. I'm sorry. For those of you wondering, I put my foot in the wrong place and her chair scooted over it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, also... It'll probably only make you feel worse if I tell you. There's probably going to be some people listening to this that have no idea who Hanson was. I know. <laughs> I'm old. To, well, to our credit, honey, they were a one-hit wonder, and then nobody gave a shit about them after that. I That's, know. They were. <laughs> they had. They had six months, and then that were, they were done. <laughs> That's, but they. Fu- it um, fucking looks like motherfucking Hanson. I, can't, I don't care who says what. I don't care what the inspiration was. I can't see anything besides Hanson. <coughs> well, yeah, and granted, not all of the Alolan forms look too great because the Alolan form of of, of uh, Rattata and Raticate, as we had mentioned... Fucking Faticate. Well, R- Rattata, I'm going to admit, I think he looks okay. I like the fact that he's a black rat with a mustache. Yeah, I Rattata that. looks cool. But, but Raticate, then it evol- it's a case of evolution was not kind. Yeah, Raticate evolves into, here's Raticate, but he stuffed a bunch of walnuts in his cheeks? I don't know. And that's like if you were raising a bunch of rats and it's like, this one's plump enough for harvest. Yeah, basically. It's it's not it's not pleasant, but... Sorry, Lightning Bliss, if you're listening. Some of the ones that do look cool, like uh, Alolan Sandshrew, who, he looks like an igloo. Like, if, if Alolan Sandshrew, because, so Sandshrew, this time around, as the Sandshrew that are native to Alola, they're ice types. Ice, ice steel, for whatever reason. Yeah, ice steel, and I swear, the way he's designed and everything, if a, uh, Alolan Sandshrew was just face down, he'd look like an igloo. I think one and of the I dex love- entries mentions that, too. Yeah, and I love it, and then and just... Volpix is so beautiful, and then when it evolves, it's like... Ah. Yeah, Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Ninetales, which now they're ice instead of fire, and they're, yeah, they're pretty good to look at. Eh, anyway, I don't think we can talk too much more without going into spoiler territory, so right about here, about a half hour in, is about where we're going to put the spoiler. But, so, but spoiler free... We loved this game. Yeah, spoiler free. We loved the game absolutely. Maybe if you, if you want to listen further, we're going to maybe best in the series. I'd probably have to play it once or twice more to be able to determine mm-hmm. that. It takes me a little while to decide I, that sort of thing. I certainly felt like this was a breath of fresh air, though. Like oh this yeah, was, there's no question. This about was that. definitely a case of if you've not given a shit about Pokemon for the past couple of years. Here or, you go. Or, or heck, even the past couple of decades, and maybe you wanted to get back into it. Maybe you wanted it to be different. Here you go. This is a great game. Like, I wholly recommend it. All right, so now is the point where we get to the spoiler territory. So, this is your one and only spoiler warning. We are going to talk about the spoiler stuff that happens, and if you don't want to be spoiled, don't listen past this point. You have been warned. lovely alarm sound effect that I'm going to insert post um, post production because <laughs> I'm totally going to do that. That's why I made you pause. You could just record me going wee wee. No, because then I'd have to kill you, and uh, I don't want to have to move back to New York after I can't afford to live all this place for myself. I mean, if you murdered me, you could just move to prison. But that, I mean, that that'd be the likely outcome. It's okay. You're not allowed to murder me. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna hold, I'm gonna hold Deku Link and pretend like that conversation didn't happen. For, that doesn't play well. I know that doesn't play well on audio, but she has a she has a mini Deku Link figurine from Majora's Mask that she's holding that she really likes. Um, so, so spoilery time. Getting getting into all the stuff. Okay, so 
What's one of the biggest things to you that you really dug about this game? Lily's character progression. Yeah, so the story, like, the story, it, it kind of felt like... It felt like it was the potentially the best portrayed in the series. Yeah, like, they really went with a story that has a good amount of emotional impact. And it's not like... It's not like one of those things, like, black and white, where, like, oh, the whole freaking world is at stake, blah, blah, blah. No, this one, the stakes are lower, but you feel like... It's super personal. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, the personal impact of what goes on in the story, and, and you do you do feel attachment to these characters, and they are memorable. Um, character, you mentioned Lily. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Lily. Who, who's Lily? Why, why do we like her? Initially, I didn't. <laughs> I'm dead serious. It was like, oh, great. So we have Madam Wishy-Washy over here. Oh, my God. My Pokemon is being attacked on a bridge that I can totally run out on and grab. <laughs> Somebody help. And then it was it was being attacked by Spearows, and they suck. So the fact that they're, she's afraid of Spearows already would make me think you are you suck more than a Spearow. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> but like it goes from being I am so I am so fucking much a pussy I can't even protect my own helpless little Pokemon and I keep it in a duffel bag yeah That's although a whole another kettle of fish to her credit considering what she was lugging around and the fact that that thing was an experiment and like this is not something that people it, it is like in the world of this game it is not a Pokemon that is considered common and would probably draw attention. Yeah, it's like if some laboratory were to summon, like, an alien from Asteroid 12, and it's it's little and tiny and just like you're going to save it so you keep it in your backpack. <laughs> yeah, so that's... That's kind of, like that's like every kids meet an alien movie or something. It's like if you had ET and you fit in your duffel bag and you were trying to help him get home. That's Lily's story arc. She Pretty has, much. She has this little thing. It's called Cosmog. She calls it Nebby. Yes. And we grew more attached to Nebby than we did to her, but that doesn't make Lily less important. Yeah. Well, that's because. Well, when you find out more about Lily and her life. The person she was when you first met her makes a whole lot of sense. You do get you, you do kind of get to see this character grow. I mean, granted, like, and you know, you have your character, which we kind of forgot to mention this earlier. I'm glad it's customizable. Oh yeah, much like an X and Y. So, oh no, there was so much gratitude in me for that because I was about to be like, "Don't make us go backwards. You had something beautiful here. Don't take it away." And it's like, oh, "Hallelujah!" Because yeah. that freaking hat that you know, they put on the girl. Yeah, you want to know real advancement? You don't have to wear the hat. You could take it off. Yes. I totally took that hat off. Yes. I said, "Fuck that hat." I don't have... There's not a hat in this game I like. <laughs> but there's hairstyles that I like. I And there's hair physics for long hair. It made me so happy. I kind of saw that a little bit with, like, some of the longer hair characters, like Lily. Yeah. And you also have... You have your goofy sidekick, Hal. Spelled H-A-U. He's... Sweet. He, he's... So he kind of fills the role of like the friendly rival. He is here's the thing about Hal is that he's really likable though in and how goofy he is. Like he's never a jerk like I don't know, blue or any any Green, of that stuff. Whatever the yeah, hell his Gary, name is yeah, like any, he's not he's not a jerk. He's a friendly rival and like he's I do he, miss the days of the jerky rival though. He loves to eat. He also He loves his malasadas. Oh uh, yeah, he fucking loves malasada. Um but that's that's something that's interesting about him, though, is that he has character traits that I can remember other than the fact that he's the rival. Yeah. There are things that I know about him, like the fact that he kind of lives in the shadow of his grandfather, who was the kahuna of the first island. And he's... But he doesn't let that get to him. It just gives him motivation to keep doing better, which is fantastic. Yeah, and it's like... There, I also remember that he's kind of slow. Mm-hmm. Just a little slow. He's a little slow in the pickup. It's like, like you've got Lily standing there and 
her mother and other family member just like they look so much alike and it's like wait wait you guys are related now if you did want a jerk rival though you do also get that in the form of a character named gladian if i'm pronouncing that correctly. i think so yeah i mean he is so at first he kind of seems almost antagonistic yeah, I seriously thought he was going to be an antagonist through the whole game when we first met him. He used a weird Pokemon. Yes. Uh, it, it's called Type Null. First of all, what kind of a fucking name is that? I don't care if it was made in a lab. Yeah, w which is strange. But it evolves into something pretty cool looking and... I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Uh, Sil... Sil Valley. Sil Valley? Sil Valley, yeah. Like it's, silicone. Yeah. It's, like silicone valley. It's pretty I dope just looking. got that name. Yep. Yep. Let let that you're the face you're making. You're just stymied at that, like I feel like how? I didn't think of it either. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, Gladian he he shows up and he battles you a number of times and he's like frustrated. He's like, oh, it's like, you don't use your full potential. What's wrong with you? It's like, you're a waste of time. Like he's that kind of character, but he gets better near the end. So, so the, <laughs> I have to mention these guys. So every game has their team and this game kind of throws you for a loop to where at first you run into some thugs and and when i say thugs i mean the very that is he means exactly that thugs Punks. team skull what what are team skull like honey not even in game are they taken seriously by anyone like the first time you encounter them you're in a conversation with someone and the dudes just like the dudes just like they come up and like, "Yo, we want your Pokemon, son." For hashtag Japan no understand gangsta culture, and he's like, "Oh," and then he turns back to you and keeps talking. Don't don't they though, or do they understand the fact that no one would care about people that talk like these guys and wear these skull bandanas? Because so. In previous games, anytime there's been a quote-unquote team, whether it's Team Rocket, Team Galactic, Team Plasma, what have you, uh, they're always considered like a threat. Despite the fact that, you know, we as players in the game, they're just these fuck, they're just this nuisance. Mm -hmm. You know, Team Rocket shows up, it's like, I'm going to do the same thing I did to you before. I'm going to kick the shit out of you. And then you're, um, I've saved, the 10-year-old the child saved everybody that was cowering from these idiots. <laughs> to where the world treats, like, those teams like a threat, Team Skull this is where it's like they're painfully obviously aware that even the rest of the world looks like them like they're a joke because as you mentioned i love how dismissive everyone is it's like team skull we're the big bad group gonna steal your pokemon yo and even some characters are like yeah whatever just <laughs> <laughs> like they literally get ignored at one point in the game and i love this it's like you remember you know who we are right we're team skull you get the chance to say who are you? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I took that. I took that option because I it, did too. Because it's like, yes. I was like, yeah. Thank you. I was like, who are you again? They're like, yo, you don't remember? It's like, no. Like, why would I? And in my game, they said, <coughs> oh, you don't recognize us because we're standing in different places or something like that. They were trying to save their reputation to their egos. And I will admit, their their boss, um, oh golly, Guzma. I feel like I'm going to remember him more than any of the other, like, team bosses from previous games. If like, only for the reason, then he is a sad, sorry punk. Yeah, I mean, because Cyrus, I only, I only remember Cyrus because I saw a Pokemon Generation short not long ago. <laughs> and other than that, I didn't even remember his freaking name. And Team Plasma, okay, Team Plasma are memorable um, because they, they actually seemed like the most legitimate threat that had come since previous games before that you know team magma team aqua you know you can kind of remember those especially since they were in the recent games so they're still fresh in everybody's memory giovanni everybody thinks giovanni's awesome i don't know what the fuck giovanni did other than make mewtwo that's it and he ran the eighth gym 
What he do you fucking make, do? He didn't even make Mewtwo. He just provided no. the funding for it. Yeah, that's it. And only in the anime, really. Yeah, it's like, other than that, what did he do? Nothing. It's like, who gives a shit? It's like, Giovanni wasn't some big badass. He was just... He was just there, in my opinion. So, but Guzma, he's he's almost comic relief because, as we said, Team Skull are a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I love that the game is so aware of that. Yeah, tell tell us about Guzma, honey. What? Uh, yo, I'ma bust your ass. I'ma knock you down, just like I did last time. Even though you totally smacked my ass. That's, that's, good. that's th- yep. That's pretty that's, much it. That is correct in inflection and everything <laughs> tone and everything. <laughs> that is Guzma in a nutshell. He also has my f- most favorite line in the entire game, oh. which we will get to shortly. But and what's funny about it is that so they have this dumb this team of idiots who everybody is aware of how stupid they are, and they do some bad stuff, but... they I will give them credit for one thing. They do have a town where <laughs> they did take over. Yeah, they have this abandoned town that they just run, and nobody nobody screws with them there, but just because of how many of them there are. Yeah, I'll give them that much. But what's also kind of funny is that how the story was aware of it and was kind of using... This is where, like, this the writing in this was really brilliant. The story uses this team and your own expectations as a veteran Pokemon player. Is, is a misdirection. Yeah, they are, they, the Team Skull is a red herring for, who are the real antagonists of the series, in this game in particular. Well, I can't say the whole. The, whole the singular group. actual antagonist. Yeah, you have one antagonist. So there's another group who. They are presented, and and they and they're not a bad. They're not bad, even after you complete the game and everything. They're not bad guys. It's just that the person that was running it kind of fucked up. Was not great. Tell us about the Aether Foundation, honey. Fuck Lusamine with a broken, rusty beer bottle, and I hope she gets salmonella. <laughs> so the Aether Foundation are a group that they seem like the hero team, you know. They all wear like they're they're conservationists, basically. Yeah, they they seek environmental and Pokemon conservation, essentially, and which is a noble thing. And Team Aether is also uh, uh, where we get everyone's favorite waifu, Miss Wick. <sighs> Shout outs to you, Sketchy, because we know you know we know you love your Wick is thick. I I totally agree. Um, <clears throat> yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, that slap probably didn't come in. <laughs> Should we leave this in? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, Team Aether. Um, but who's Lusamine, honey? Why? Why? Lusamine you... is the president of Aether Foundation. Now, the first time you meet her, she doesn't seem so bad. She she seems a little eccentric. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. And probably the hottest woman, I almost said, (laughs) probably the hottest woman in her 40s that we've seen in a Pokemon game. Well, we don't know how old Wick is. We also don't know how how old Jesse is. Heyo. That dead silence is probably probably this. There are people listening to this facepalming right now. Like, why did I say that? (laughs) Anyway... But yeah, Lucimine, dat hair. She's weird. Like, immediately I did get a bit of a control freak vibe from her. Especially when she said children should listen to their elders. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, so she's got good intentions, but she's got some issues. Yeah, and the thing is, so later in the game you find that She's really, really into, like, keeping her Pokemon and keeping them safe forever. Like... Forever. Or better, yeah. Forever. (laughs) Like... Yeah. Yeah. um, (laughs) Yeah, because, because, you know, she She seems... She has a... Yeah, she seems really nice and everything... And then we learn that her two children, Lily being her daughter and Gladian being her son, 
they rebelled against her for a reason. Because... She literally has a secret room in the back of their house where she has frozen living creatures. Yeah. To preserve them for eternity. Yeah, she cryogenically froze Pokemon in blocks of ice. I'm not even exaggerating. And it's fucking horrifying. Like, you don't get to leave your ice block. This way you'll be safe forever with me, my dear. That is exact. That's Lusamine in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. And, like, she only cares about what she sees as valuable. Like, little Cosmog, little Nebby. She was gonna have it use its powers and let it die yeah because to her that thing was a means to an end uh so that so another little ripple that gets introduced into the grand story and everything here pokemon that are not pokemon why are they not pokemon because they're not unlike something like giratina which was sent to another dimension these are creatures that are from another dimension. Oh, snap. <laughs> Ultra beasts. Yeah. They're weird. Yes. So, and I almost feel like this is the closest that Pokemon is getting to designing Eldritch Horrors. Because... Especially with fucking Nihilago. Nihilago. Or However you say it. It is essentially the thing that we're describing. It's called uh, Nihilago, and we're probably mispronouncing that. It's considered a jelly... It just looks like a jellyfish. It's a it's, fucking rock. It is a rock type, yes. Why is it a rock? <laughs> Ever I, since we saw its typing, I've been trying to process this. <coughs> it is more gelatinous than fucking tentacle. How is it a rock? And my explanation for that probably came from the idea that this is something that comes from another dimension. And this, along with many other things... So, Lusamine, uh, the Team Aether leader, she becomes obsessed with wanting to... Because it's not enough that she knows these things exist. She thinks they're beautiful, and she wants them in her collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where... That's where, and again, Team Aether by itself as a whole is not a sinister group. But... Their leader is kind of... Yes. The founder, the founder is... And the other thing being that she was working with members of Team Skull. Actually, she was funding Team Skull. Yeah. She was making Team Skull do stuff for her, you know, to steal Pokemon and preserve them for her. Like, Just go. Yeah. I wonder how they're going to portray her in the anime. Yeah, it'll be... It's... I, I And like I said, so you have a character that basically just wants to... You have a villain, who, an antagonist who... They want to capture Pokemon and collect them for their own sick, twisted, conservation, uh, overprotective... Yeah. But see, when he said that it's not something that is threatening the world, it really isn't. No. Like, she lets out a few other Ultra Beasts, but at most you've got, like, ten. Yeah, because they're... Because when dimensional... Like, dimensional gates start opening up in the story, and I'm not exaggerating, and, like, these other weird creatures the ultra beasts show up and you know they can pose significant harm but it's not like the whole world was going to be thrown into chaos and really the biggest thing about the story was like we kind of mentioned it's more of an emotional impact and a personal impact because it's about lily and her connection to her mother as well as gladian and this is where we kind of see Gladian go from an antagonistic character to being Anti-hero? more... Anti-hero? Yeah. I, I, I'd probably say that because he's doing the... I mean, because Gladian's motivations is... Protecting Type Null. And wanting to get it through to his mother's thick skull that what she's doing is wrong and that she can't keep doing this. Yeah. And, and Lily, we see her grow from this cowardly character that's afraid of Spiro's... And as we said, Spiros suck. Um, <laughs> if you're afraid of a Spiro, you, you... You've pretty much failed life. You need to grow a pair. And, you, um... Like, and then she actually grows to a character being able to actually have the confidence to tell her mom that she thinks she's wrong and everything that's wrong with her. And and that's great. It's... I, I liked that. Mm-hmm. Lily became more likable. Yeah, she grew on me, genuinely. 
So, at the end of the day, like, getting through, like, the main story stuff, like, what were your, th- what were some of your immediate thoughts after you got to that point? I was like, this girl, I should probably learn a thing or two from her, because I still have prob- problems telling dad about that sort of thing. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, Lily, you're okay. This story's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, about personal, personal growth. Personal. Personal. <laughs> personal, um, personal, that'll be the next as I legendary blow, Pokemon. As I blow out the audio because I'm leaning closer to the mic. Um, but like showing personal growth in a child character going from being incre- to being very insecure to actually becoming stronger as Lily tends to follow you. She starts to really follow your lead and grow attached to your character as, as a tra- and seeing how you are as a trainer and all this stuff and and that's great. That's that's really good. That's really nice. Um, it's the first time in my memory that we really see genuine character progression in a Pokemon game. Yeah. Um, other than just, like, I want to collect and be the best. Um, like no one ever was. Oh, man. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the story was really good. So some of the other characters we didn't mention uh, are Professor... Fucking Kukui. Professor Kukui. Oh, man, I love this guy. He's my favorite professor yet. He's... Oh, he's awesome. I, I love him. Like, he's a professor that you will battle a few times. How many professor? How many professors have we seen go shirtless? Nobody. <laughs> the closest we got was Sycamore. <clears throat> yeah, and even he ain't... He ain't, he ain't rocking abs under that. <sighs> Not like Professor Kukui is. And the thing is, with Professor Kukui, t- tell us a little bit more about him and what you thought of him, honey. Fucking wrestling. Oh, yeah. Fucking wrestling. Okay, it's and it's like, it is completely obvious from the get-go. When you get to this place in the, um, in the islands that's like, the battle royale where it's like four trainers against each other which also introduces like that mechanic of like yeah four 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 way free for all battles is a thing in this and it's like he's like i am el luchador i am the royal mask or whatever the mask royale and it's like even the first time you see the fucking character you're like yeah you're there's an option where you say professor Yep. It's his, like, it is so obvious. His and, goatee. And... Oh, he's married, too. Yeah, he has a wife. And it, it's like, his wife, I don't think, even realizes that this wrestler battle royale person that she's a fan of is her husband. I forget I forget her name. That's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. Um, hang on. I can find it really quick. He, oh, yeah. He bought the guide, too. Uh, Professor Burnett. Burnett. B U R N E T. Bernay, Bernie, Burn, however you, pro- however you want to pronounce it. But yeah, yeah, she's she is his wife, and yeah, and she talks about how like she's got the hots for the master royal. I can't wait. I can't possibly miss the master royal match. Like it's like and just kind of playfully, playfully aloof that it's her husband. Yeah, I I don't get it. But I freaking loved it. Like, I loved the fact that the Battle Royal Dome was... It was basically a wrestling ring, and each Pokemon is in a corner. And, and also something fun that this game did. You are traveling through the trials as they are establishing their Pokemon League. Yes. So that was pretty cool. And when you reach the champion's chair, you become the first Alolan champion. Not right away, though. Yeah. Because you got to go through one more dude after the Elite Four. And there's a reason I brought this up while we were talking about Kukui. Who, who was it? Who, who, who was the, who's the dude? If there's nobody's champion, who, who do you have to fight? Puppy Cat. Really? <laughs> you probably blew out everybody's ears with that one. No, fucking Kukui walks you through the the Elite Four the entire time. <clears throat> it takes you up to the champion's chair that is like you have to earn it. So you have to fight someone. Yeah. And who's the only other person there? 
him. And it's like, and this is where they throw you for the real loop because the Pokemon that is stronger than you, the one you didn't choose, that's his strongest Pokemon. Yep. So while how your friendly rival, he picked the like if you pick the water type, he's gonna pick the fire type. And if you didn't, and the one that gets left behind, that becomes the professor's. And the professor will use that on you in the final fight before you get to become Pokemon champion. And you know shit got real when he took his glasses off. That's, like, other than the times when he's the mass royal, that's, you even, you even felt it too. Like, he took the glasses off and you're like, oh, crap. He's like, oh, it's getting real now. Yeah. That's when he meant business. And... Oh, something interesting we found out, and I, neither of us have experienced it directly yet, but apparently every time you go up to the um, champion's chair after thereafter, somebody new comes up to challenge you. Yeah, and essentially, and this is something that's been done in previous games where you can fight the Elite Four multiple times. Yeah. And something, and this is, you know, part of the end game content, which there is a lot of. Um, we'll mention some of the stuff briefly, but not everything. Um you can go up there, and, like you beat the, you fight the elite four again. Go up to the champion chair, and then somebody else from the game will challenge you, like, and that's great because they even say that after you do that to where it's like, yeah, you're the first champion. There're gonna be people coming for your title now. Like you gotta defend it. That's pretty cool. Um, and it really just it makes it feel like you are the champion. Suddenly, you're Cynthia, you're um, Dancy, you're Steven. Also. Uh, yeah, and last thing I'll mention about Professor Kukui, the way he's written, I could easily think of one or two voices, and we oh. kind of already decided which one, if like he had a voice actor. Because you really do feel like like this wasn't ignorant Japanese people trying to write for Samoans, but this kind of felt like... They probably had a good idea like of like Samoan culture and stuff to where... Like, and granted, I'm not saying everybody talks like this, but the way Professor Kukui is written, he uses words like co- cousin and... Brother and that sort of thing. Brother, yeah, stuff like that. And we can imagine him with one of two voices, either Dwayne the Rock Johnson <laughs> or Waka from Final Fantasy X. Yeah. And Waka felt more like I could... And when I thought of it, I couldn't hear him any other way. He was Waka, essentially. <laughs> yep. Like, you gotta train your Pokemon good, yeah, cousin? So, yeah, uh, now something also interesting that this game introduced, and I know we fucking forgot about this entirely, Z-moves. Oh, yeah, we haven't mentioned that. What are Z-moves, honey? They're ways for you to strike a pose and power up your Pokemon. Basically, you're bayonetting your your Pokemon. (laughs) You're saying that because you beat that game earlier today. Yeah, okay, I've got Bayonetta on my mind. I know, I know. But, um... But it's like, there's certain motions and poses that you do, and you re- you can only do this once per battle, but you wrap your Pokemon in, like, a special aura, and it's like suddenly they can do some super move. Yeah. And some Pokemon have, uh, like, super powered moves that are unique to them. All three of the starters have one. Yes. Of course, Pikachu has one. Which is great. Alolan Raichu has one. Mm-hmm. Fucking Snorlax has one, and yep. so on. That mystery gift. Um, yeah, I, I think the Z moves are kind of cool. They're spe- It's. I kind of look at Z moves the same way. Like if I'm playing, like if I'm playing Street Fighter, and I want to finish somebody off with an Ultra and make the screen flash like the sun uh, to get him, hit him with the ultra in the last hit. I kind of look at Z moves like that, but I also yeah. look at Z moves as like, okay, I want to make absolutely positively sure I knock this asshole out in one hit. <laughs> Your favorite in the world is Incineroar. Oh god, Incineroar's signature move. He summons a wrestling ring so he can do a moonsault off the top rope. <laughs> and you can't, and like, even yours, um, uh, Oceanic Operetta from Primarina. Yes. Summons a spirit bomb made out of water and sets it off with her opera voice. It's, it's great. It is great. Decidueye also has a really dope one where he just bombards them with arrows and it's actually super cool. So Eat your heart out, Oliver. <laughs> um, 
yeah, Z-Mo Z moves are kind of cool. You know, maybe not as awesome as Mega Evolutions. Eh, depends on your perspective. Some people might find Z moves a lot cooler. I, I guess, yeah. Um, but it, I will admit, collecting all of the crystals is a bit of a pain. Yeah, because the crystals that are specific to certain Pokemon, like, you, you might have to track them down and stuff. But then there are the Z crystals, because there's a Z crystals for each element. And they don't have enough trials and such like to give you all the Z crystals, because that's how you progress through the game, is collecting Z crystals from each trial. Yeah, but, you know, and, and again, there's a, it's cool to, like, find the ones that you wouldn't just get through story progression. Like, yeah. And as the areas are cool to go back through and everything, especially... Well, depending you... on, your person, on your personal perspective. Yeah, yeah that's cool. I don't, like tr I don't like having to trek through that freaking desert again. That, yeah, oh god, yeah. There is a desert in this game that is much like Alpha, Sapphire, Omega Ruby's uh, forest where... It's not just a straight uh, path. You have to, like, turn different directions and take different ways and backtracks or just to navigate through the damn thing, which mm -hmm. is stupid. You're that thinking was... of the forest from X and Y. Was it? It was an X and Y. Yeah. We can edit this to make me sound like I was right the first time, but you probably won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely gonna be. I'm barely gonna muster enough effort to edit out all of our pauses and shit. <coughs> I will cut out some of your coughing though to make you sound yeah, healthier. Um, but yeah, and that that was a pain. But like everything else, like speaking of game progression, hey honey, hmm? Ellie, do you like hidden moves? No, you don't. No, but. What would you, if what would you do if you didn't have hidden moves though? Catch a Pokemon ride. What's a what's what's that? Why is that better than hidden moves? Because you don't have to have a fucking HM slave that wastes all your move slots in your party. Yeah, hidden moves are gone, and I'm happy that they are because I. <sighs> so instead, to handle, explain this to us, honey. Why 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 are Poke rides awesome? Well, first of all, it lets you use other Pokemon that you can't really get in the game. But it's like for something like Surf, you you get this device that lets you call trained Pokemon to take you around the islands. And for Surf, you get the ability to summon a Lapras that you hop onto the special seat and you're riding it around and you don't even have to train the damn thing. You can it, go fishing off that seat. Mm-hmm. And, okay, for Fly, you just... Everybody's gonna love this, so let's just say it. You'd ride around on a fucking Charizard. Yeah, I also kind of feel like this must have been <clears throat> this must have been nicer for for animators making this game, and the fact that where previous games you had like a flying Pokemon that you taught fly to, and you had this generic black shadow blob thing that would just come out of a Pokeball and fly your little two D sprite around or three D what have you. This time around, since it's like, okay, you have a dedicated Pokemon that, like, it does not take up space in your party because the ride, the ride pager is the item that is used. So it's just a key item, and you have a thing in a menu, and you can actually bind the different ride Pokemon to the D-pad, which that was funny when I figured that out because for the longest time I was like, what the hell is the D-pad used for? Because you can't move around with it. <laughs> but you can... Uh, bind Poke Rides to that so with a push of the button on the D-pad it's like all of a sudden I'm riding on the back of a Tauros and I can charge through rocks that's awesome I can hop on the back of this Sharpedo and ride through the water like a jet ski or you and... can hop into Bachamp's arms and be carried away oh god yeah like their answer to strength is the Machamp carries you in its first two arms and then with the top two it like pushes the block yeah it's I admit that's the stupidest of the rides but it... strength is necessary yeah, it's goofy, but we still like it. Um, but yeah, Poke Rides are freaking awesome. I never want to see HMs again because the biggest thing that... Again, having an HM slave to where you have to teach a Pokemon a move in order to traverse certain areas of our world map. And that got to me a lot in Alpha Sapphire when... I have a Gyarados, and I, I thought it was cool because that's the first time I raised a Gyarados. You gotta teach the Surf to ride on. Now, I knew about that, 
Now you gotta teach it waterfall. So you can get out this waterfall. It's like, okay, I'll teach it that. Okay, now you gotta teach it dive. So you get there, it's like, oh shit, uh, like that was, <laughs> that's a fucking. I had to teach three HMs to my Gyarados. That's the fucking worst. <laughs> It was especially stupid. I brought over a... I, I transferred up a Pokemon I had in Diamond and Pearl. He he had to know Strength and Rock Smash. And before I could transfer him, I had to get rid of his get rid of those moves. I'm like, this is so dumb. This shouldn't be a problem anymore. And thankfully, I think, going forward, it won't be. Because if another Pokemon game comes out, and for some god-awful reason, HMs are in there, I will fucking shit a brick. That is... <laughs> That is worst shit ever. <laughs> this mini section of a Charky Talks brought to you by Eliora Productions. I don't, yeah, I don't mean to just talk over you, honey. No, more, it's great. You're more than free to stop me in my rambling. This is why <coughs> it's some of the best shit ever. <laughs> um, yeah, it, hidden moves are gone. No, now for those of you who are wondering, but like, well, I like using Surf in battle. Can I still use that? You still get those moves. Yeah. Like, in the library, specifically, I remember this girl gave me a TM for fly. Yep. It's a TM, not an HM. And I'm like... <sighs> yeah, so, I mean, because there are some people that do like those as, like, just battle moves. Yeah. I like fly and I like surf. Yeah, so you do still get those. And that's good. Just now, you don't have to teach them to your Pokemon so you can get around this world map. And it is great. So... Yeah, it's it. I think we've said enough. Well, I will mention uh, one final thing as far as some of the end game content goes, and that is the moment I had earlier today <laughs> when I got to what is played more of the of the post game content than I have at this point. When I got to the battle tree, and the battle tree, if you're somebody that like Battle Frontier and the like, they kind of have you covered this time around. Battle Tree is an end game thing where you go to the specific area and you take on trainers in a row. You have to see how many trainers you can be in a row. You're not allowed to use items. Any Pokemon that you have above level 50 will be made level 50 just for this particular thing. Mm -hmm. And that sounds great. So if you just like you want to fight to your heart's content, you go here. Your Pokemon don't gain experience, you get battle points and you use battle points for items. So yeah, and you fight all kinds of, you try to see how many trainers you can be in a row doing this. And that sounds awesome to me. And if you're somebody that just wants to fight to their heart's content and get battle points which you use on like you can get all kinds of like stones and items uh and tell them what happens when you first get to the battle tree, beloved. So when I got to the battle tree, because some of the things in the battle tree, if you get far enough, you'll get to fight against some veteran characters. And when I got to the battle tree the first fucking time, red and blue were there. They didn't have the cool battle music I was promised, so I feel, I feel gypped. But they had a remixed version of Blue's theme. Yeah. When he's talk Yeah, that's what's funny. That whole exchange, Blue is doing all the talking and Red just has like ellipses and Blue's like, uh, oh, silent as ever, huh? Like, Red speaks in Morse code. <clears throat> the thing is, given the way he looks, and also the way Blue looks, I feel like if Red was saying anything to where like Blue's like, Ah, oh, what do you think, Red? If he was saying anything, it'd probably be him holding his hat saying, uh Yaddy, yaddy. Yes. And if you understood that <laughs> reference, you get a cookie. <laughs> Red is Jotaro, and Blue might as well be fucking Kakyoin from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Can you tell what his tastes are? <laughs> anyway. Ye tubby da. <laughs> oh my god, you're such a nerd. I know. <laughs> we both are. Yeah. But... Uh, and I think that's about all that we can say about it because there's still plenty of other stuff that we can do in the game. Yes. And legendaries. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Legendaries. That's good. I don't be. think. Yeah, I don't think we have to mention like all. It's just there's some that's, fucking legendaries. Yeah. And if you want to challenge getting them, fucking go for it. Yeah, but that's something that's a standard part of the game. So. Mm -hmm. So, your final your final thoughts. This game's great. Like, if you were getting tired of Pokemon, this game's got you back. And you play Pokemon like nobody else, whereas, like, me, I kind of consider myself more casual, but... Mm -hmm. No, I take my Pokemon a bit seriously. Yeah, I, I don't, 
because one of us gives a shit about IV and, uh, and EVs. Can you guess which one? <laughs> it's not me, because I didn't know those were a thing. <laughs> He's learned much. But I will say, in the weeks leading up to this and the weeks that I've spent with this game, I loved it, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. Whether you're someone that likes Pokemon casually or you're diehard, this game has you, man. It's freaking great. It's great. great. It, it really is. And that's about, all that I, that's about all I can think of. Yeah, I think we're good here. So, we hope you enjoyed listening to us. We'll probably do reviews in the future if something in particular catches our attention or if I can make him sit through more than 20 minutes of Naruto. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I won't torture you. You'll be rewarded. That's my own. That's 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 the way to end it. So feel free to let us know what your thoughts may be about this game. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you recommend it? Do you don't? Feel free to let us know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions you would like for us to review in the future. Go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. Game? Movie? We don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, we kind of care on some movies, but we'll, we'll, we'll take it with Nothing a Nothing that's going to make me scream. I no. will not repeat Dead Space Incident. No. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> this is Eliora. And I'm a Charky. And we will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.